The next item of business is members' business debate on motion 16822 in the name of Miles Briggs on Scotland, a nation of lifesavers. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Miles Briggs to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Every day, on average, there are 10 out-of-hospital cardiac arrests in Scotland. That re represents 3,500 of our fellow Scots every year whose hearts stop working and who need rapid resuscitation attempted in the community to help save their lives. Now, many of us will have been in a situation w where this is presented to us, such an emergency situation, and need to step up to respond. I recently faced such a situation at a bus stop on London Road when a lady called me across to help her husband who had collapsed. Now, I'm pleased to say that the Scottish Ambulance Service had literally arrived within seconds. Um, but I, however, felt confident enough having attended a training session to attempt CPR. Now, re research shows that when somebody is having a cardiac arrest, every minute of delay in resuscitation or defibrillation reduces their chance of survival by 10%. Today, as things stand, for every 12 cardiac arrests which occur in Scotland, statistically only one person will survive. These statistics compare unfavourably both with the rest of the UK and internationally. I'd therefore like to pay tribute to the whole team at the British Heart Foundation Scotland for initi initiating the campaign in response to Scotland's poor out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survival rates and welcome them today to the public gallery. The Nation of Lifesavers campaign aims to ensure that every pupil is trained in vital CPR skills before they leave secondary school and has been praised by international experts and medical professionals. It's therefore a very welcome news that after the positive campaign and well-received campaign by the British Heart Foundation Scotland that every local authority across our country has now agreed to sign up to be part of the Nation of Lifesavers campaign. The campaign will now see all secondary pupils trained in CPR before they leave school, resulting in 50,000 young people receiving life, this life-saving skill every year. Deputy President Officer, I have seen at first hand just how passionate our young Scots are in learning CPR and equipping themselves with life-saving skills. The Parliament's Public Petitions Committee recently heard ev evidence from two of my constituents, eight-year-old Millie Robinson and, e and Ellie Meek, pupils um, from the Parkhead Primary School in West Calder. Millie and Ellie were highlighting the campaign by St John's Ambulance to also teach first aid in schools. And I want to take this opportunity to commend Ali, Ellie and Millie for their enthusiastic uh, campaigning. I know MSPs from across the chamber and those on the committee were hugely impressed by their passion and to see how first aid and life-saving skills is something all the young people want to uh, see. Deputy President Officer, I think it really does also go to show the passion of our young people have and the opportunity to learn this life-saving skill that they would go to such lengths as extreme lengths as bandaging Brian Whittle's smelly feet. Oh. Now, I digress, digress, but one of the aspects which I think is important to return this debate is around hospital cardiac arrests in Scotland, which is perhaps not widely known, and I know uh, the Minister's raised this as well, is around inequalities in attempted resuscitation. Cardiac arrests are therefore also an issue of social justice and contribute to Scotland's health inequalities. Someone living in one of the country's areas of high deprivation is qu twice as likely to experience an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, will statistically experience a cardiac arrest seven years earlier, and will be 43% less likely to survive to leave hospital following a cardiac arrest in comparison with people from more affluent areas. That has to change. Deputy President Officer, I also believe that Scotland's Nation of uh, Lifesavers campaign can also present a wider opportunity for all of us and present a real challenge, regardless of age, to learn CPR and for companies and employers to also consider the potential benefit of providing CPR training opportunities. The retailer Asda, for example, was the first large retailer to commit to having public accessible defibrillators, CPR trained colleagues in all stores back in 2014. I'd like to congratulate them on this positive move. Since ASDA introduced the DFIBs and rolled out their training through a partnership with the British Heart Foundation, several lives have been saved in stores as a result. Only last month, a customer collapsed with a heart attack in ASDA Elgin with a first aid a colleague using CPR and a DFib while the ambulance was called, called, thankfully managing to save that individual's life.
Therefore, this debate is an opportunity to thank and congratulate British Heart Foundation Scotland on their successful campaign, which also has recently been shortlisted as a finalist in the 2019 Scottish Charity Awards. It is thanks to the commitment from all 32 local authorities in Scotland that thousands of young people across our country will now be empowered to step in and perform potentially life-saving CPR with the knowledge and skills to keep themselves and other people around them safe. The Scottish Government has committed to training half a million people in CPR by 2020 through its out-of-hospital cardiac arrest strategy. And I welcome the positive progress which has been made in trying to realise that. The opportunity now to create a nation of lifesavers is within our grasp. We should all be rightly proud that Scotland can and will become a nation of lifesavers. And I hope we will soon see that Scotland is able to achieve the highest number of citizens equipped with this life-saving skill. And I'd like to congratulate, finally, um, the, cabinet, the, um, the government for the work on this, also for the British Heart Foundation Scotland for all that they've done. And I move the motion in my name. Thank you. I see we have a, a very well-behaved public gallery tonight. I didn't have to tell them not to make a noise. <laughs> we move on to the open debate now, and speeches are four minutes, please. Uh, Bill Kidd, followed by Annie Wells. Thank you very much, President Officer, um, and thank you very much also to Miles Briggs for bringing this motion forward for debate. Um, there will be one or two uh, statistics repeated here from what, uh, from what Miles has already said. But I think that, as Miles knows well, if I'm saying again what he's already said, he's doing well, you know. So uh, I'd like... <laughs> I liked that one myself. Uh, anyway, this debate provides us with the opportunity to raise awareness of the importance of CPR training. And it allows us to highlight how the commitment to provide uh, this in schools across Scotland will, and I'm certain about this, will save many lives. I'd like to thank the British Heart Foundation for the Scotland's Nation of Lifesavers campaign which the motion being debated today is centred around. And due to the determination of the British Heart Foundation, we are able to celebrate the fact that all children in Scotland attending local authority secondary schools will receive CPR training. The British Heart Foundation have offered all local authority schools in Scotland free CPR training kits. And I'm proud that Glasgow City Council was the first local authority to commit to training all secondary school pupils in CPR. But I'm even more pleased that this commitment has now been adopted by all local authority areas across the length and breadth of Scotland. And our nation will truly become, our, gen, our next generation, a bigger pun, our next generation will truly become a nation of life savers. And I thank the British Heart Foundation again for that ongoing accomplishment. This campaign complements the work of St Andrew's First Aid Organisation, who over the past four years have trained 45,000 people in Scotland with CPR skills, together with organisations like the British Heart Foundation and St Andrew's First Aid are active participants in the Scottish Government's out-of-hospital cardiac arrest strategy. Uh, through proactively working in line with the Scottish Government strategy, they have helped improve survival rates from cardiac arrest in Scotland from 1 in 20 to 1 in 12. And going forward, we know this can be improved even further. I believe that this rollout of training will encourage the next generation uh, an outlook um, that is community orientated, where people will be quicker to intervene and perform emergency first aid. CPR training prepares people technically and it also challenges us to act when we see someone in, in need, uh, such as Miles said, that uh, was a situation with himself. Um, the British Heart Foundation have highlighted that many members of the public feel afraid of helping and that this can consequently lead to a delay and a person who is suffering a cardiac arrest from receiving the necessary CPR or defibrillation. 3,500 people in Scotland experience an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and have a resuscitation attempt in the community each year. I'd like to encourage us all to use the Nation of Lifesavers campaign as an opportunity to consider how we can become not only technically prepared, but also mentally prepared to perform CPR so that we can jump to action should the need ever arise. For every minute without CPR following a cardiac arrest, the person's chance of survival decreases by 10%. I believe that mental preparedness will come hand in hand with the rollout of CPR in school training. And however, I would also like to encourage adults to be inspired to take up available opportunities to refresh their first aid training 
Many workplaces um, will offer first trade training, such as we do here in the Scottish Parliament. So please do not pass on this opportunity. You never know when your preparedness could save a life. Collectively, we have a duty in our community to look out for our fellow neighbours and help where we can. So equip yourself to save a life and thank you very much. Annie Wells, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. <clears throat> I'm extremely chuffed to be part of this debate today. I was actually one of the first MSPs to back this campaign when the Evening Times in Glasgow ran with it last year. And a, a big thanks to the British, British Heart Foundation for organising this campaign, as well as all those involved in making it happen. CPR, which stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, is a life-saving medical procedure that is given to someone who is in cardiac arrest, helping the blood around a person's body when their heart can't, cannot do it. In Scotland, as we've heard, there are, there are over 3,000 out-of-hospital cardiac arrests each year. And it was upon learning that Glasgow has the highest number of cardiac arrests in Scotland that the Evening Times launched its Glasgow's Got Heart campaign. And by putting pressure on the council to take action, as we've heard, Glasgow became the first city in Scotland to roll out CPR training to all secondary schools. And I'm delighted to have supported that campaign, which has since evolved into the BHF's Nation of Lifesavers Drive. And it now has commitment from all 32 local authorities, a massive achievement indeed. Why is this campaign so important? Because it puts power in children and young people's hands to save lives. This could be a family member, a neighbour or a stranger in the street. Currently, fewer than 1 in 12 people survive cardiac arrests in Scotland. And for every minute without CPR, the chances of surviving drop by 10%. In Glasgow, in Glasgow people living in the city are less likely to survive a cardiac arrest because research shows that CPR training levels are lowest in cities with a high deprivation quota. This is a statistic that could so easily be improved upon. Where CPR is taught universally, such as Denmark and Norway, survival rates are much higher, as high as 25%, with bystanders far more likely to take action. By teaching young people these skills, skills that will stay with them their entire lives, we are giving pupils the confidence to perform CPR, giving everyone in Scotland a greater chance of survival. And I know just from, from personal experience that CPR training lasts a lifetime. I learned it as a teenager, never thinking I'd have to use it. But 30 years later, I did. And with, inst and with instinct kicking in and me knowing what to do. The British Heart Foundation has pledged to supply every secondary school in Glasgow with a £1,300 training kit, which includes a DVD, reusable and inflatable mannequins. And although the training just lasts 30 minutes and requires no staff training, it is fully comprehensive, hopefully giving pupils the confidence to put their new skills into practice when needed. I understand that individual schools have already begun offering training, but full council rollout isn't expected to start until August this year, in January 2020. Looking at where Scotland goes next in terms of improving cardiac arrest survival rates, I was pleased to hear from the British Heart Foundation that its next campaign will focus on defibrillators. Although your chances of survival increase by up to 70% when a defibrillator is used properly, currently they're only used in 2% of CPR cases. BHF wants to look at barriers to their usage, that is, where they are, what they are, and how to use them properly. And I think this will be a great campaign and I will be once again happy to support it. To finish today, I'd like to thank my colleague Miles Briggs for bringing this topic to debate, as well as the Evening Times and the British Heart Foundation for their tireless campaigning. Although it's in early stages, I have no doubt that this campaign will be a life-saving campaign. Emma Harper, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to thank Miles Briggs for bringing this debate to Chamber this evening and highlighting the figures and the statistics related to out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, so I won't repeat them. 
I would like to start by thanking the British Heart Foundation for their tremendous work in lobbying all the Scottish local authorities to teach CPR to all secondary school pupils. This is an action which will undoubtedly save lives and that's been mentioned already. Indeed, I congratulate all local authorities, such as Dumfries and Galloway and South Ayrshire Council in my South Scotland region for signing up to this important, important commitment. Last year, when a similar debate was brought to chamber by my colleague Stuart McMillan, he highlighted the Jaden Orr campaign, Show Some Heart. And in that debate, I spoke about the work of Dr. Richard Cummins from Seattle, which I think it's worth highlighting that his work again. Almost 30 years ago, Dr. Cummins discovered that if a series of events takes place in a set sequence, a patient who is suffering a heart attack stands a greater chance of survival. These events are now known as the chain of survival. That chain is early detection and call for help, early cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, early defibrillation and early advanced care. The chain has led to more successful survival rates of persons having cardiac events in hospital and since the advent of community defibrillators to better out of hospital survival rates as well. Following that debate last year, I contacted Dumfries and Galloway Council to ask if CPR was taught in the secondary schools in DNG, and I was pleased to hear that all but one were already participating. Presiding officer, schools across both Dumfries and Galloway and South Ayrshire have committed to taking part in the Heart Start scheme since its inception by the British Heart Foundation in the early 2000s. And the scheme's main aim is to increase cardiac arrest survival rates by creating a nation of lifesavers. The Call Push Rescue Training Kit, which is available to any school as well as community group, provides all the specialist equipment needed to teach CPR and teaches trainees how to recognise cardiac arrest and carry out CPRs, CPR on adults and children. It uses a film tu tutorial to demonstrate CPR skills and participants watch the film and practice the skills on portable mannequins. It also shows how public access defibrillators work and how the, their role in the life-saving process is essential, so trainees are aware of their importance and are more confident to use one if needed. I was pleased to have had the opportunity to attend one of the CPR Heart Start education sessions myself last year at Dalbeatty High School, and all the young people were fab and enjoyed the process. I used to teach CPR and resuscitation skills myself when I worked in the theatre department in Los Angeles. So seeing the young folk at the school so engaged was great to see. Beside an officer, I've been active in my efforts to support community defibs across the Fries and Galloway area, and I've been lobbying the Scottish Government to relax the planning rules around installation of these. At present, publicly accessible defibrillators are not covered by the permitted development rights, which means that the installation of a pad may require planning permission depending on the circumstances, location and type of building. But if permitted rights are, um, are, are created, then we would be able to have our uh, defibrillators more accessible and readily available. So, presiding officer, it's important to protect the built environment, but we want to make sure that we can have our defibrillators in the right place. I'm pleased that the government is taking this into consideration in the planning bill, and I've asked for it to be made simpler and easier for communities to install pad devices. I support this motion again, and I thank Miles Briggs for, and the British Heart Foundation, and of course, all schools and young people across Scotland who will be taking part in the Heart Start scheme, CPR scheme. And I support that the next generation of Scots will become a nation of lifesavers. Thank you. Uh, the last contribution in the open debate is from Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. It's a, a privilege to speak in this debate and, and have the opportunity to celebrate the success of the fantastic campaign by the British Heart Foundation to bring CPR training to all of Scotland's secondary schools and also discuss what more can be done to improve cardiac arrest survival rates. So I thank Miles Briggs for, for bringing forward his very welcome motion. As a number of members have highlighted of the, the 3,500 people in Scotland who have a cardiac arrest outside of hospital each year, just one in 12 survive. And that's simply not good enough. There's plenty of international evidence that shows with the right measures, we can drastically improve those survival rates. That evidence highlights the strong correlation between CPR training in all our secondary schools and improved survival rates. When it was introduced in Denmark, the country's out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survival rate tripled and now sits at one 
in four. Every minute without CPR and defibrillation reduces the chance of survival by up to 10% after a cardiac arrest. But too often, people don't have the skills or the confidence, or as Bill Kidd highlighted, maybe they're afraid to intervene when someone has a cardiac arrest, and the chance of survival can often be lost. So ensuring that more people are trained in CPR will have a transformative impact on cardiac arrest survival rates, and teaching it in school is the most effective way to ensure better society-wide awareness and skills at the earliest possible age. The British Heart Foundation have therefore done a fantastic, life-saving piece of work campaigning for CPR training to be taught in every secondary school in Scotland. School is all about teaching life skills, and there's no better such skill than actually saving lives. The only disappointment is that BHF did have to approach every individual local authority to sign up to the campaign, instead of the, the Scottish Government ensuring at a national level, in the same way they rightly signed up to the Thai campaign, that CPR would be mandatory in every secondary school. So I hope that when winding up, the Minister will make a commitment to underpin the support of individual local authorities by stating that the Government will ensure this training does become mandatory in their school, making it more sustainable in the long term. It also needs to be followed through with broader improvements to the system of care for when cardiac arrest occurs, ensuring a chain of survival that offers early recognition, early defibrillation and good post-resuscitation care, not just early CPR. That means improving public awareness of the symptoms of cardiac arrest and the steps that should be taken. Crucially, it also means ensuring that defibrillators can be quickly and easily access. This requires a, an overall increase in the number of publicly available defibrillators and better awareness of where defibrillators are and how they can be accessed. They must be visible, well publicised and we need to consider how information about their location is better shared. For example, ensuring any public defibrillator can be searched for on Google Maps would help people identify their nearest defibrillator in an emergency. The location of defibrillators is also important. We need to ensure that rural areas and deprived communities are not ignored, particularly given the strong link between deprivation and risk of cardiac arrest. As Miles Briggs rightly highlighted, those in the most deprived areas are twice as likely to have a cardiac arrest and more likely to die as a result than those in the least deprived areas. It's a clear example of the unacceptable health inequalities that sad sadly continue to plague Scotland. Despite the progress made in recent years, heart and circulatory diseases remain the biggest killers in Scotland, causing almost a third of all deaths. That's almost 50 people each day. And the rate of coronary heart disease deaths is 80% higher in the most deprived areas. Constructive, evidence-led solutions and interventions, such as the teaching of CPR in all secondary schools, will play a key role in reducing those deaths. So in concluding, President Officer, I warmly applaud the efforts of the British Heart Foundation in securing the commitment from each local authority to CPR training in our secondary schools and providing the resources to implement that commitment. And I congratulate Scotland's local councils for embracing this initiative. But it's now our job to show that same level of commitment. That means the government enshrining that commitment nationally and building on this initiative to take more action to improve the prevention of cardiac arrest and the care of those who suffer one. So that just like Scotland's young people, we play our part in ensuring that more lives are saved in the future. Thank you. Now call Joe Fitzpatrick to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Minister. Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to contribute and respond on behalf of the Government on this important debate. I wish to add my congratulations to Miles Briggs for securing um, this evening's debate. Um, I'd also like to thank all of our partners who are working hard to help equip many people with CPR skills, particularly our young people. Like others, I was delighted last week when Save a Life for Scotland announced that more than 430,000 people across Scotland have learned CPR since our out-of-hospital cardiac arrest strategy was launched in 2015. We know uh, that prompt intervention by a bystander can increase the likelihood of survival after cardiac arrest by two or three times. Calling 999, starting CPR and using an available defib um, in the minutes immediately following a cardiac arrest is where the greatest gains in survival will be achieved. CPR is a life-saving skill, as others have said, that practically everyone can learn. That's why we launched Save a Life for Scotland. <clears throat> as many of you will know, Save a Life for Scotland is a partnership of public and third sector organisations such as the British Heart Foundation, St Andrew's First Aid, the British Red Cross, the Royal Life Saving Society and Lucky to Be Here. Partners are working together to encourage and equip people with CPR skills and raise awareness and willingness to intervene at a cardiac arrest. 
The Save a Life for, for Scotland partnership is a unique model building on a strong foundation of existing work by services, communities and individuals across Scotland and equipping children and young people with... Indeed. Maureen Watt, I thank the Minister for giving way. Would he also like to thank the firemen uh, and women in all our fire stations who, when the uh, cardiac arrest uh, strategy was launched, um, did a great deal of work initially in helping people become uh, confident in CPR skills. Joe Fitzpatrick. I, I absolutely would, and, and thank, thank the member for making, making the point, which I think I was going to miss. So, so thank you. It is an important point. Um, the, the British Heart Foundation's successful campaign, um, which, as we've heard, has secured the commitment of all 32 uh, local authorities in Scotland to teach CPR in their secondary schools, is also to be commended. It's an ex excellent example of the, the work being done and I, I think it's appropriate at this point to also recognise the lead uh, shown by uh, Glasgow um, and, and the, uh, the Glasgow newspapers um, as, as highlighted by Annie Wells and, and Bill Kidd and in, 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 in shown the lead to other councils across Scotland and it is fantastic that we've managed to, to get by and right across Scotland. I, I, I sometimes I, I, I hear the point that Colin uh, Smith was making about can we not just make make this the law um, but I actually think the, 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 the leadership shown by our um, local elected members right across Scotland is something that I think we should um, all commend and, and respect and, um, and in, encourage. Um, under, under, I think I'll make some progress, under curriculum for excellence, excellence health and well-being is one of the three key curriculum areas along with literacy and numeracy which is the responsibility of all staff in schools. One of the, the many benefits under Curriculum for Excellence is that schools already have the flexibility to provide first aid training. It's up to individual schools and local authorities to decide if and how best to deliver this. And as Emma Harper has said, many primary and secondary schools across Scotland have already embedded CPR awareness and uh, skills development. Save a Life for Scotland has worked with Education Scotland to develop um, a resource uh, for, for schools and that's delivering our aim of making CPR learning easy, accessible and free. And the learning doesn't stop at the end of class. Children are asked to go home and teach whoever is at, at home with them the recovery position and CPR using their teddy or a pillow and feedback tells us that that is exactly what they're doing. Um, in 2015, we launched the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest strategy with the commitment to improve survival and outcomes for out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. To improve OHCA outcomes requires improvement to all six elements of the chain of survival, which Emma Harper mentioned earlier. Readiness, early recognition and call for help. CPR defibrillation and uh, pre-hospital resuscitation, post-resuscitation care and aftercare. One of the aims of the strategy is to equip an, an additional 500,000 people um, in Scotland with CPR skills by 2020. And I'm so delighted that we are so far along that, that, that road into achieving those aims. Since 2015, Save a Life for Scotland partners have worked with schools, community and sports groups, in workplaces, uh, public places and at major events, as, as we've heard a, a number of members talk about, to equip over that 430,000 people with CPR skills. So that's a fantastic achievement and I want to acknowledge the hard work of all the partners involved indeed. Um, I thank the Minister for taking this intervention. As much as I love uh, consensual debate, I can't let this pass without uh, noting that the, the strategy comes to an end in 2020. So I wonder, in terms of taking the plans forward and, and, a, and a broader sort of consensus and future vision around this, what work the government's going to take forward with charities who obviously, like the British Heart Foundation, have led um, on a lot of this positive work? So, so all, all the work that we're taking forward in this area, we're taking forward in partnership. And, and I know you're maybe trying to get us to, to not be consensual, but this is an area I think we all want to continue to be consensual on because I, I think we've made the progress we've made because there's been buy-in across um, not, not just this parliament, but across society that this is something that we want to do um, uh, so, so importantly. Um, so the, the strategy, which I think was un unanimously um, supported in, in 2015, um, has enabled more people to go home to family and friends. 
Since the start of the OHCA strategy, data shows that more people than ever are being given bystander CPR, um, an increase of 15% to 56% of OHCA patients in 2017. So that, that's really important statistics. Importantly, more patients had a pulse on arrival at hospital than in previous years with return of spontaneous circulation up to 23.3% in 1718, and 1 in 12 um, survive to leave hospital compared to 1 in 20 before the strategy was being implemented. So this is really making a difference, but I absolutely accept the point that Miles Briggs was making, that we need to, to continue to look how we, how we can do more and, and, and continue to do that to get to that, that, that point where as many people can um, survive one of these events as we hear in, in other parts of, of Europe. It's important to remember that we can all learn from each other and I strongly encourage anyone who uh, learns these life saving, saving skills to pass this knowledge on and teach their family, friends and colleagues. Um, it's helpful, I think, that Miles Briggs talked about his experience today in, um, in, in the chamber um, that he'd recently experienced um, because that's how I think we can overcome the, the, the fear of, of helping that Bill Kidd and uh, Colin Smith had, had mentioned. Finally, I want to touch on public access defibrillators. Uh, members will recall the debate in this chamber uh, entitled Show Some Heart, the, the Jaden Orr campaign in April last year, which highlighted the importance of defibs. Um, our strategy recognises the importance of defibs and aims to make the most effective use of those that are available. As part of the strategy, the Scottish Ambulance Service have committed to mapping public access defib locations through uh, launching the registration of resuscitation campaign so that people um, know where uh, defibs are um, at, the, at the point that they are needed. That's a point that was raised by, by uh, Colin Smythe as well, I think. Um, the campaign maps public access uh, defibrillators into, onto their, their call handling system so that bystanders can, direct, can be directed to a nearby defib if required. Through the system, we can improve their use and I urge everyone responsible for a public access defib to register it with the Scottish Ambulance Service. Um, I'm really grateful to the, all the contributions from the, cha from the Chamber, but also to all the communities, voluntary organisations and individuals and businesses who've um, been fundraising um, to, to purchase those defibs and make them publicly accessible across Scotland. La last year, we published a guide to public access defibs, which provides uh, practical advice for people who want to install a defib for their local community. I think we can all acknowledge that the strategy is making excellent process, progress in impacting out of hospital cardiac arrest outcomes for Scotland. President Officer, I want to close the debate by again thanking members um, and all those involved in improving outcomes for out of hospital cardiac arrest. I'm delighted that Scotland is well on its way to being creating a nation of current and future lifesavers. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.